What's going on hikers? In today's video we're going to be talking about seven pieces of absolutely useless gear and why you should be taking them into the backcountry with you. I know, confusing right? Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel because that's exactly what this channel is all about. Our mission is to help you increase your quality of life on trail. We want to help you have a better time in the backcountry. So let me preface today's list with these pieces of gear. Yes, I think they're useless. But I also think they're super useful and some trips I would never ever consider taking any of this and on other trips they're absolutely perfect for the situation that I'm in. So hopefully nobody gets butt hurt and I don't get a bunch of hate mail and comments about oh I use this piece of gear every single time. We'll, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, we'll see how much hate I get. So let's get started with the list. Number one is... Oh, ring a ling a ling a ling Bear bells. These aren't actually bear bells, even though they could be used as bear bells. They're the bells that my dogs ring whenever they want to go outside. They're hanging on the back door. I literally just took them off. So the bear bells. Why should you never take them? Well, honestly, if you're in black bear country, uh, most of the time bears will just run off whenever they first see you. At least that's how it's been in my experience. Absolutely do your research. I'm in by no means a wildlife expert, but the bear bells may be very useful because if you're just walking by yourself and you're quiet, well, you might startle that bear. That might not be the situation that you want to be in. Now, grizzly country, I can't really speak a whole lot to that because I don't have a whole lot of experience in grizzly country. I mean, I went to Colorado not too long ago and there might have been grizzlies there, I have no idea. But other than that, I haven't really been in a situation where you would encounter grizzly bears. So do your own research when it comes to those. But in black bear country, I don't find the bell super useful, but making noise in the back country is essential to not startling those bears. So if that's your thing, that's perfectly fine here. Number two on our list today, we're actually sticking with the bears. Wow, you know what this is? Of course you do. It's bear spray because you want to spray a bear right in the face. In all seriousness, you definitely, if you have to use this, don't get it on you. <laughs> I've heard some horror stories about how if you do get it on you and then you wait a couple minutes and then the pain and the burning just intensifies. Now this bear spray, this is a big can, but it only sprays for like four to six seconds. It does spray pretty far. like. I don't know, 20 feet or so. Now, I never take bear spray with me anymore, but whenever I first started backpacking, this absolutely gave me peace of mind and actually helped me get my trail name whenever I was backpacking through the Smokies on the Appalachian Trail. No, I didn't through hike it. I was just, uh, just doing a section hike. But anyway, got a trail name with the bear spray. I'll link a video above if you wanna check out the story behind that, behind that. But if this gives you peace of mind or if you're in like I said before, grizzly country, this may be an absolute necessity. So use at your own risk and uh, consider taking bear spray with you, especially if it makes you feel better. Number three on our list, something I loathe, but absolutely love at the same time. It is a hydration pack. And this one has a giant straw coming out of it and you can get you some water out of there. But the problem that I find with these hydration bladders is a couple things. One, I don't know how much water I have left whenever I'm using one of these. And two, my backpacks, the ones that will hold a hydration bladder that has a little sleeve, it is such a pain. If I have to refill this hydration pack whenever I'm on trail and I have to take the pack out, right? The hydration pack, the bladder, refill it and then try to stick it back in that pocket. And I don't know if you've ever tried to do that with a full backpack, but there is almost no way for me to get it back in there without having to unpack the backpack. Super annoying. So I know some people will just lie them on top of all their stuff in the backpack, but we'll talk about that later with uh, getting stuff wet in the backpack, I promise. Now, you should absolutely take one of these and I'll tell you why. I know, you're confused. What? 
it's useless, but he wants me to take it. I'll tell you what I oftentimes use this for. Whenever I get to camp and I want to fill up a massive amount of water and just absolutely not worry about refilling water, even the next morning whenever I break camp and leave, my wife uses these quite a bit and we'll fill it up with clean water at night. And you can see I, hung a, I put a little loop so I can hang it on a tree here. And then anytime we need water, Sometimes I put on one of those little caps that come on the, uh, what, what's the bottle? Life water, I believe, or smart water bottles. If you put one of those caps on there, you can just open it up and let the water pour out while this is hanging on a tree. So it's kind of gravity fed. Another thing you can do is, um, I've seen people put little snaps on, on a hose running off and you can literally just hang it on a tree and snap it closed and when you need water open up the snap and voila you have fresh already filtered clean water that you put into the bladder before so you make the choice do you need one of these on trail or not sometimes it's absolutely luxurious number four bloop, a bug head net let me tell you this thing is a piece of garbage absolutely useless you know, a lot of times it just takes up extra room in my pack. Heck, half the time I don't even bring it, especially in the winter time. No need for it. But I will tell you this, whenever I was backpacking the Vermont Long Trail and it was black fly season and those things, I'm talking about you're putting on gloves, you're tucking your pants into your socks, you're not wearing shorts, you're wearing long sleeves. Anytime I had to stop and sit down and those black flies were nagging me, I put on this bug head net and I would have paid everything that I had on me in order to buy one of these things. It was even to the point where I had to, you know, I'd have it on and I'd have to lift it up and take a bite and put it back down, you know, whenever I'm chewing my food. So <laughs> this is an essential piece of gear, but only sometimes, you know, sometimes it's absolutely garbage. Number five on our list today, doot, doot. That's right, baby, it's a whistle. Most people already have these in their backpack. It's not actually in it, it's on it. The sternum strap that goes across your chest. If you look closely, a lot of times there is a whistle built in. I know some backpacking companies, absolutely every backpack that they produce, the sternum strap clip, it is a whistle. Now, completely useless, but in an emergency, or I'll tell you a quick story here in a second. In an emergency, super, super useful. Whistle is going to travel a lot, a lot farther through the woods than you just screaming. You know, if you're screaming for help, instead you could tweet a whistle three times, and three is basically the universal signal of "Hey, help me, help me, help me." So, the whistle. I'll tell you my quick story. I made a, a dumb mistake. Didn't have a paper map with me, and I was trying to find a group of friends, and it was like. 30 degrees and snow and the wind was blowing the snow in my face and I finally got to a point where I could call the whole time I didn't have some cell phone signal and I couldn't look at the map on my phone so I called them and I was like hey where are you guys and they're like well where are you and I was like let me blow my whistle and I gave it two tweets and they could hear it and then we basically used the whistles to whistle back and forth to get closer and closer to each other Till finally we found each other. And yay, I didn't die on that trip. What a great day. Number six on our list. Yeah. Is that grounds for demonetization? I don't know if I can afford to put this in the video. I, I was gonna say Rambo knife is a useless piece of gear. This isn't exactly a Rambo knife, but you can probably imagine what I'm talking about. This is a Mora knife and I'll list everything I'm talking about in the description. Uh, fair warning, some of those are affiliate links, so there's no extra cost to you. It only gives me a kickback if you want to help support the channel and order something. But this is a more knife and absolutely useless. A lot of people, all they need is a razor blade and that's it. They're cutting some string or they're cutting a piece of cheese or some summer sausage. But for some people, this is an integral part of their backpacking kit. This is a full tang knife. I believe it's the only Mora knife that you can get that is full tang. It's absolutely awesome for processing wood and you may not need it, 
But in the winter time, especially if it's cold and wet, snowy or rainy, this thing could be a lifesaver. So sometimes I take it. Most of the time I just take a little pocket knife like this and that gets the job done. But if I'm needing to process wood or I know some of you do some more bush crafty things, this could be your best friend. Number seven on our list. <laughs> what do we have here? Can you read that? Can, can you even see that? Let me just show you. This is a bunch of stuff sex. I mean, it's an entire box full of stuff sex. It's one of my favorites. My bear hanging kit. This is my food bag stuff sack. It's not useless. I always take it, but a lot of these stuff sacks, it seems like everything comes with a stuff sack and they're super useless, but oftentimes they are super useful. Let me tell you when. If you are somebody who wants to absolutely make sure that your stuff is not going to get wet in your backpack, a stuff sack might be the right way to go for you. If you're somebody that likes to organize your gear in little pieces, this will compartmentalize your backpack and you know you have to kind of be careful of what you pack where because it could throw off the balance and the weight and all that jazz, but stuff sacks could be for you. Now on the whole waterproofing thing, I mentioned this earlier about getting your stuff wet. You always want to make sure that at least like your clothes and sleeping bag and those kind of things that you don't want to get wet or have some kind of water barrier between them and your pack. Now I use either a contractor bag or they make these Nyla flume bags and they're super light and it's basically a backpack liner. And then once you have everything in there that you don't want to get wet, you just twist it up, stuff it down in. And even if it rains and you don't have like a pack cover, your stuff's not going to get wet. But I know some people love to take one stuff sack that's waterproof, roll top, stick their sleeping bag in there or their top quilt or their under quilt or whatever they're using. And then they'll have another one for their clothes. So you do whatever's best for you. But I will say again, stuff sacks absolutely useless until they're useful. Comment below and tell me what other useless stuff that I've left out of the video. If you've enjoyed, make sure you give me one of these, subscribe to the channel and Kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next one. I'm still here. I don't know what's up with my hair today. It's a hot mess. I need to wear a hat.